Welcome at E2E Designs. Today I like to do some hydro dipping on cycle parts on a carbon seat post, also on a carbon stem and onto some carbon handlebars. And if you have seen hydro dipping before, you know that's a cool way to transfer crazy structures onto these parts using a box of warm water, putting some color on top, it will float on the water and you can dip these parts through the color into the box, transferring these effects onto these parts. And that's what I like to do today, but I like to go a bit more professional. I like to show you how to do it high quality with a durable surface. And first things first, we have to think about how we can dip these parts without touching them. So we have to make some handles for the handles. And I prepared some stuff and I like to show you how easy that can be. And what I made is a little M6 rod. That's for the seat post. You can screw it on with some nuts. Very simple, you can find it at home and you can dip it into the box using the rod as the handle. And for the stem, I made such a plate. It's a scrap I found on my yard. I drilled two holes and I can mount it onto the stem and I can dip the stem also screw the color into the box. I know you like me seeing these parts dipping, but before we can dip, we have to think about how to prepare these parts. And for the handles, I made it also very simple. I cut some wooden sticks, found it in my garden. I can place it and put it into the handle. And so I have some handles for the handlebars. I can touch it and I can dip it into the box without touching these handlebars. Okay, very simple. You can find all these things at home. And before we can start dipping, we have to prepare the surface. If you have color on these parts, you have to remove the color. You have to sand these parts. You have to primer the parts. And that's what I like to do at first. Yeah, dipping is cool, but preparation is cooler because that makes it high quality and durable. Use a bucket of warm water, some wet sanding paper or such a scuff pad and scuff all these parts for a flat surface and for good preparation and a good adhesion for the primer. Yeah, and that's what I do first. And when I'm ready, I will come back to you and I like to show you how to apply some primer and what primer to use. The question is, what's the best primer for our carbon parts and for hydro dipping? For hydro dipping, the best primer would be a light primer, like a white primer, because the color which floats on top of the water is very thin. It's only a thin layer, and these colors are not able to pop out on dark parts like black carbon parts, so we need a white primer as the base. And we need a primer which sticks well on the carbon, and it's mainly the same like epoxy, so I can use a uni primer. And I will use a primer from Montana, and the color is T2300. It's a 1K, but it's fine for me. If you want to go high professional, you can use also a 2K, but that's good enough. So let's primer these parts. And when I'm done, I'm ready for the hydro dipping. Last track of the forest to the trees, forgot what I was chasing. Spent so many nights living out at sea, that my heart is gone vacant. Everybody who was close to me all stayed on dry land. So now I'm driving back on in the state west. I just gotta feel something. Not gonna wait till the morning because I'm just gonna change my mind. All the parts are primed and ready for the dip, but there are some issues we have to talk about. When we dip these parts into the water, they will be wet and you can't touch them without destroying the artwork. So make sure you have installed some hooks where you can hang these parts. I've installed some of these hooks myself. So make your life easy if you can. That makes the life easy. And the next thing we have to talk about is the box. We have to prepare it for the color and the water. And what I will do is I will use some tape and I will mask the box with the tape on top of the box because the color will stick on the edges of the box and I don't want to waste this box. So I mask all edges and the color will stick onto this tape instead of sticking onto the box.
The water level has reached the tape and that's exactly what I want for the hydro dip. Now we have to talk about the color and the big question is, do we need water, do we need milk or do we need pudding? To make art we need pudding, but to make pudding we need milk and that's exactly how your color should act. I will use professional enamel color, I will link you some underneath the video you can use for the hydro dipping, but make sure you buy also some thinner and make sure you mix the thinner into your color until the color acts like milk not like water and not like pudding, that will be perfect for the hydro dip. And when you have that, you're ready for the fun part. I have to find some rubber gloves and some wooden sticks for steering and then we can do the dip and we can dip these parts in a nice color swirl. And I'm ready for the fun part, I found some rubber gloves and also some wooden sticks because I like to do a swirl and I like to show you how to do that. The first thing we have to do is we have to drip the color into the box onto the water and I will use a pipette and I will drip only some drops and as you can see the color floats on top of the water. And I have to do a pattern with different colors until I reach a swirl. And when we have enough color on the water we can do the swirl and I will use such a wooden stick to swirl the color around and because of the different surface tension the colors won't mix and you can produce these crazy structures. Just mix them around as you want. So let's do the stem at first and wish me luck that I get a crazy result. Let's check this. Isn't it nice? Sometimes the first try is not the best so I decided to wash off the dipping from the stem because the seat post has a nearly perfect dipping and a nice marble effect but that doesn't fit to the stem so I will do the stem again and that's very easy. You can clean your box with an old cloth to remove the complete color like this. Use such a cloth and the color will stick to the cloth. And you can remove the complete dipping for a new one. And you can start from scratch and that's what I like to do with the stem.
Yeah, not 100% per perfect. I have some white spots and I'm not really sure if I like it or if I do it again. Can you see these white spots? And maybe I try only red and black for the dipping colors. The point of no return, first try of a handlebar dipping into a marble color. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, it's in. Oh, check this. Not so bad. Yeah, I like it. Check this. It looks really nice on top. Yeah, that's a great result for the first time. Really nice. Yes, the color and the effect is cool if you like such effects, but what's not so cool is the surface. We have a rough surface with a lot of spots which need to be sanded, but when I sand now, I will remove the structure and the color. That's not what I like, but if you know my videos, you know that I like a professional finish, and that's what I like to show you now. We have to do two steps, a transparent primer, sanding in between, and the finishing clear coat on top. And I will start with a transparent carbon primer, and I will use this primer because it's much thicker than a normal clear coat. It sticks much better and I can sand all these parts without removing any color. When I've done the sanding, I can apply the finishing clear coat on top and I'm done. So let's start. I'm back from the paint booth and I'm sanding the transparent carbon primer with 800 grit. And if you don't like sanding, ask your girlfriend Sandy or Sandra if they like to sand your parts. And when you have the super slick surface, you can apply the clear coat for a high gloss finish and you're done. It's time to dance the last dance in this painting game and to apply some clear coat. Don't forget your safety gear and then have fun. All the parts are finished, nice and shiny with a high gloss clear coat and I have a little advice for you. The first try is not every time the best, so put these things several times in the bucket until you have the design you like, do a good preparation and do a good finish, and you have the same result like this. These parts are ready to mount them on the bike, to ride down the road, and if you like custom painting on bikes, check also my other bike painting videos. Don't forget Insta and Facebook. Thanks for watching, and see you in one of my next videos. Goodbye.